everyone and welcome back to another video, a Q&A. One that I haven't done in a very long time. I've only done one Q&A ever in the past here on this channel and it's been a while. I do do them kind of frequently on my Instagram page, um, which is also where I ask you guys to submit the questions. And I got a lot of questions, but I picked out a few of them. It's a mix between, you know, highs and lows and everything in between. And yeah, I'm pretty excited to be filming a video that is just kind of low key. You know, there is no B-roll shots, there are no sound effects and all those things that I love, but it's kind of nice to just have a conversation, you and me. So let's just dive right into it. Did you grow up in Stockholm? Yes, I get this question a lot. Were you born in Sweden? And those sorts of questions. And yes, I was born in Sweden. I have lived in Stockholm for basically my entire life. I did live in the US for two years, a couple of years ago, but yeah, this is where I grew up. Are you a dog person or a cat one? And I am 100% a dog person. I do like cats. I think they're kind of relatable, but yeah, I love dogs. Full on dog person. What are your hobbies besides YouTube? You know, great question. I think that YouTube is my hobby. It's also my job, but it does take up so much time. I mean, I'm working Monday to Sunday, pretty much all of my awake hours. So I don't really spend a lot of time doing anything else. You know, maybe I should pick up some more hobbies. I don't know. But one thing that I do love is reading. You guys know that, but that is also kind of part of this job because we have a book club on this channel, but I definitely don't see that as a job. I definitely see that as my hobby. I really enjoy reading with you guys. So yeah, I mean, the book club, the book club is my hobby. And if you haven't joined, we are currently reading Cosmos. So check that out. The link will be in the description box on how to join. How old are you? Probably the most frequently asked question and I am 25. I turned 25 this year. Is your audience mainly male or female? And my audience is actually almost exactly 50-50, which I think is really fun. I don't know. I like the fact that I attract men and women equally. Um, it's kind of cool. What are the first things you started decluttering to achieve a minimalist lifestyle? Great question. Um, I can't remember if I started with my closet or with people. Probably my closet. When should I start doing makeup? I am now 14. Um, I think that I heard this on Desperate Housewives. I think it was Gabrielle who said that you can start wearing makeup the day that you realize you don't need it. And I think that's pretty good advice. I personally started wearing makeup pretty late. I mean, I did have my, you know, the years when I was experimenting with the eyeliner and the foundation and, you know, all every product uh, just to kind of find what I liked and what I didn't like. And what I've realized now that I'm 25 is that I really like to keep it at a minimal, you know, as little as possible. I love the natural look, not just on myself, on everyone else. Whenever I see a photo of pretty much anyone where it's a with makeup or without makeup, I'm always more attracted to the without makeup look. I just think it's very flattering. Um, but I also think it's really cool when people can express themselves through makeup. Uh, I do watch some makeup people on YouTube sometimes, although I don't really have much interest in it, but I think it's fun. What advice would you give to teenagers or to your own past self? Um, hmm. So much advice. I would say that one thing that's really helped me in my teens and as I became a full-blown adult was to learn to stand on my own legs. Is that how you say it in English? Because in Swedish it is stolpen which means stand on your own legs. Just, you know, standing up for you believe for and forming your morals and your values and knowing 
what you stand for and then through that you won't fall for peer pressure because you will know kind of who you are and what kind of person you want to be so just form your morals and your standards and let that guide you through life and also don't make decisions based on what someone else wants from you you know don't try to please everyone else while not pleasing yourself i think that's just going to be i think it's a perfect recipe for living a life that isn't fulfilling so just follow your bliss follow what you want to do in life because you're the one who is going to have to live it oh and also don't do drugs just don't get into drugs there's nothing cool about it there's nothing to gain there just just don't do it since you have lived in the us as well do you prefer it there or sweden and i do have a lot of love for the us but sweden is where i want to spend my life i could probably see myself living in the us again for a certain period of time i don't think i could ever see myself permanently living there yeah, I definitely prefer Sweden on on several notes um, compared to the US. But like I said, I do have a lot of love for the US as well. How do you deal with sexually harassing comments on YouTube or general trolls? Ooh, this is a topic. Uh, I did get asked this question quite a bit and I do think it's important to bring it up just because I know that a lot of people who are on social media have to deal with this and a lot of people who are new to social media might think that you know there is something going on with them like why are they receiving all this hate and all these trolls and all that and i just want to tell you that i don't think anyone does i don't think there's anyone who does not have to put up with these kinds of comments and in the beginning i would say it did get to me quite a bit um just because i mean no one likes when people are mean no one likes when people are being disrespectful towards them but as time has passed i have learned to kind of brush it off i have snapped a few times and that is that's mostly been just because I mean, I don't know, apparently someone did not teach these people that it's not okay to bully, that it's not okay to, you know, try to put people down. And sometimes I guess I felt like, well, I guess no one told them, so I will have to tell them. But no, I mean, that's not my job. And it doesn't really, I don't think it makes much of a difference anyways, unfortunately. Maybe it does, maybe I'm completely wrong on that, but yeah, just I think the best thing that you can do or that I do is to just try and ignore and focus on the positives, which outweighs it by, how do you say, by miles, by millions, you know, it's, you can't even compare the small amount of trolls to all the love and all the support. So I just focus on that. Which are the most important attributes a girl like you think a man should have? I think it's a very interesting question, but I don't think that my answer is going to be particularly interesting because I think that most people kind of look for the same things in a partner. You know, we're all looking for loyalty and honesty and kindness and fun. We want to laugh and we want to create memories. So yeah, I don't think my answer, unfortunately, is going to be a lot more fun or different from most other people. Someone who has morals, um, someone who stands for something. I think that's important. How much time does it take to record a video? So I tend to post one video a week, at least that is my goal. And I set that goal because I think that it's reasonable for me, that gives me enough time to create a video that I feel happy about without giving myself too much time and without giving myself too little time to where I have to stress and to where it affects my mental health. So 
I think one week is the sweet spot for me and that's how long it takes from, you know, from an idea to uploading a video on to YouTube. How do you cope with sleep anxiety? And I don't cope with sleep anxiety. I probably have at some point in my life, but lately and as for now, I'm sleeping really well. But one thing that I think is important is to empty your mind. So not going to bed thinking about something, not going to bed wishing you had said something to someone. You know, in that case, try to get it all out there before trying to go to bed and fall asleep. So if you have something on your mind, write it down. If you need to tell someone something, you know, go ahead and say it. So just emptying your mind and journaling is a great way for that. It's something I talk about all the time. I talk about it too much, but I'm never gonna stop talking about it because I truly think it's such a valuable habit to create. What is the first thing you notice about a person? Just any person in general, I would say, their manners and the way they carry themselves. Would you rather receive $1 million or go back 10 years with all the knowledge that you have now? And I don't see a reason to go back even with all the knowledge that I have now because I'm pretty happy with where I'm at in life. So I would definitely take the $1 million. Could you work an office job again? So I do really want to make it clear that I'm in no way shitting on office jobs. I don't think there is anything wrong with any job. I shouldn't say that. Most jobs, unless... No, what am I saying? I don't think there's anything wrong with most jobs, as long as you are feeling happy and comfortable and safe. Whether that is an office job or if you're doing something on your own, but personally for me, because I have been doing, you know, my own thing now and I love it and I don't see myself doing anything else, at least not anytime soon, no, I cannot really see myself going back to that. Does motivation come quite often to you or is it more about persistency and the strong mentality? I think that's a great question and I tend to rely more on discipline rather than motivation because motivation is something that just comes and goes depending on how you're feeling. You know, if you're feeling tired or upset, you're having a bad day, you're most likely not going to have a lot of motivation. But if you do still have developed the discipline muscle, one that you need to work on every single day, that is what's going to push you to still get you to do whatever it is that you need to be doing or that you should be doing. So I would just focus more on practicing discipline. That's what I do and that's what I rely on on my bad days, on the days when I would rather be doing something else because motivation isn't really reliable. You know, that, that girl is flaky. Have you written a book? No, I haven't. I would love to do that someday, but that day is not right now. What are some of your interests you don't talk about a lot? And, oh, I have a lot of interests. Food, I love food, I love talking about it, I love eating, I love watching food on YouTube, I love walking by restaurants and just smelling the food, I love the smell of food, I love trying new foods, I love eating, uh, food, food is definitely an interest, and animals, animals is a huge interest, passion, I don't know, whatever you wish to call it, of mine, uh, same thing there, I love watching dogs, I love walking past dogs, I love looking at clips of dogs and of deers, horses, dolphins, I think insects are fascinating. I mean, all kinds of animals fascinate me and interest me. So food and animals. At what point did you know for sure you wanted to leave your corporate job? Really good question. And I think, I don't know, maybe my answer can be helpful to someone. 
And when I really knew that, but the moment I really knew that was when, whenever I would get off work on Friday, I would already be dreading going back on Monday and to the point where I could barely even enjoy my weekend because I was so in this bubble of dread of having to go back. And then on Monday, I was already like, Oh God, I cannot wait till the weekend. Can this week just pass? Can it just go by quick? I don't want to be here. I would rather be doing something else. You know, I was so occupied with those thoughts and that's when I knew this is not how I'm going to be living my life. This is not how anyone should have to live their life. And that was, I guess, the breaking point for me. Besides the whole thing that I had other passions that I wanted to pursue, but that was what really did that to me. Any plans this summer? Um, yes. I'm going to be spending the summer in Sweden, just like most other Swedes. We aren't really very welcome in many other countries. I think. I'm not really catching up right now. I don't know how many countries have opened up their borders yet. But yeah, I'll be spending the summer in Sweden. Very excited for that because Sweden is absolutely beautiful in summer and I've never really spent an entire summer in Sweden, I mean, I can't say never, probably in my younger years, but it's always, you know, I've always wanted to travel somewhere during the summertime, but nope, not this year. We'll be sending it in Sweden and yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to that. What is your favorite book? And oh boy, I'm so sorry. I know I've been answering this question so many times and everyone who knows my favorite book at this point is probably just like, Oh God, she's actually going to bring up that book again. And yes, I am. It's Stoner by John Williams. It's my absolute favorite book. And I do have a list of all my books, all the books that I recommend on my website. I will link that below if you want to check that out. Are you on track to where you want to be in life? Great question. I think you guys really killed it with the questions this time. So thank you for that. And I've given this question quite a bit of thought and Yes, you know, I am pretty happy with where I am at and where I am heading in life. And I do think that I'm heading in the direction that I want to be heading at this point. And I'm very grateful for that. So the short answer is yes. Are you a gamer? No, but I've been, I, wow, I would spend so many hours on my computer gaming. And a lot of people don't really believe that, but yes, I would play Tibia, Fluff, and some RuneScape, not that much. I did try Counter-Strike. I didn't really play it though, but mainly Tibia and Fluff. Oh boy. The amount of time I spent playing those games is almost hard to believe, but it was a great time. And I've also, of course, played The Sims and, you know, those games. I don't think they really count in terms of being a gamer, maybe they do, I don't know. What is your source of inspiration to make YouTube videos? And I don't have one source of inspiration. I don't have a go-to person or place. Life inspires me, as cheesy as that might sound. It's my experiences. It's the people I talk to. It's the places that I go. It's the conversations that I have. It's the things that I see, the music I listen to, the movies I watch. Just Everything that I experience in life inspires me. And that's what creates the foundation for the videos that I create. Do you want to get married and have kids? Yes, definitely. Do you believe in true love or soulmates? I don't know that I believe in soulmates. I don't think that you have one soulmate, you know, the person who is kind of waiting for you to come rescue them or whatever. But I definitely believe in true love. 100%. How can I have clear skin like yours? And I think this is a perfect time to address this topic because I get this question a lot about my skin. And I do really want to say that, please keep in mind that the things that you see on YouTube or on Instagram or on TikTok or anywhere else, even if it's a live stream, that does not always accurately reflect how things are in real life. There is so many ways that a person can modify their appearance. You know, there is lighting, which plays a huge role. 
you know, in this lighting, I think my skin looks pretty good. If I were to have a direct light on me, it would not look as good. The angle plays a role. You know, I have some acne scars on the side of my face, so I wouldn't really prefer to sit like this in direct sunlight because then you would see the scars. I would tend to prefer to sit on this side because the side of my face is more clear. And with that being said, I wouldn't say that I have horrible skin. I wouldn't even say that I have bad skin. I do have really dry skin, which I do struggle with a bit. You know, I tend to flake and it looks like I've gotten sunburned and my skin is just peeling off. Um, I do have a pretty... I mean, I don't break out that much sometimes during some periods of time. And I have photos of this. I don't know if I'm going to show them here, but I have been, you know, during periods of time where I have been working out quite a lot. But so in general, as for my skin, genetics plays the first most important role for any person. So when you see someone who has amazing skin, it's not all their skin all about their skincare. You know, the biggest factor is their genetics and then skincare and treatments and things like that definitely might help but that's not the foundation of having good skin and then there's diet and things like that so for me personally i just try to drink enough water i try to stay clear of eating things that i think are affecting my skin negatively like dairy is one of those things sugar and i do have a pretty simple skincare routine i think it might be helping me i'm not even 100 percent sure um, how effective it is, but it's one that I'm happy with. It does keep me hydrated or moisturized and yeah, that was a long answer, but yeah, I just get kind of, I mean, it saddens me to think that, you know, people might be watching other people online and wish that they look like them when and feel bad about the way that they look when that might not even be a realistic when that might not even be realistic who okay visste du från början vad din youtube kanal skulle handla om eh, nej absolut inte jag bara testade mig fram jag började videos som sånt som jag tyckte var intressant och sånt som jag tyckte var kul och sen så småningom så hittade jag liksom min, min grej. Det som jag gör nu och som jag älskar. Relationship advice for 20 year olds. Ooh, I really love this topic. I'm very passionate about talking about relationships and dating and love and things like that. And I think I've always been that way. Some advice that I would have is trust your gut. I think that's the number one advice. Trust it from the beginning. Trust it until the very end. And... Trust red flags, even the very, very, very smallest ones. Don't just brush them off thinking that it's nothing because usually it is something. And don't rush it. You know, don't feel like you need to find someone right now and um, everyone else in, is in a relationship. Everyone on Instagram is having these happy relationships. Why don't I have one? Don't compare yourself to anyone. Take the time that you need to focus on making yourself a good potential partner and making yourself the person that you want to be and it'll just come but yeah if you're dating great it's fun it's an amazing experience and you will learn a lot about yourself and about other people but trust your gut trust the red flags and don't rush it and have fun are you still an introvert after all those YouTube videos? No, I turned into an extrovert. How do you deal with being an introvert in an extroverted world? This is something that I struggled with when I was younger. I couldn't really understand why I seemed to feel differently than those around me. Why I didn't quite thrive in the same way that the other students in my grade did but you know as you grow older you learn about human beings and you learn that everyone has their own way of being and that's great you know that's how we complete each other and that's how we complete the world i think 
So just coming to terms with that. And I think the biggest part, and this doesn't really have to do anything with introversion or extroversion, or it just has to do with being human. And that is to being honest with yourself. And that's how I think everyone should go through life, being honest with who you are and not being ashamed of that. So if someone wants to ask you to go somewhere, but you out of batteries, you're like, I was out yesterday. I need this time for myself. I just want to lay on my couch and not see other people. Be honest with that. Be honest with yourself that you're feeling that way and that is completely fine and that there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. And be honest with the person who's asking about how you're feeling. And if someone doesn't really understand you, you can try to explain um, how you are and how you work and how you navigate through this world. And if they don't want to accept that, then that's not really a person that you want to keep in your life. And don't try to chase things that are going to make you miserable. Like if a job is requiring you to be outgoing and a people's person and someone who's going to go to every party and every event and every social gathering and that they push that and that they think that's really important, which is fine, they can think that. But if that's not you, don't try to convince yourself that is you. Just find something that matches you and your personality don't put yourself in an environment that is not going to let you bloom because that is doing yourself a huge disfavor. Greatest advice anyone told you. My ex-boss told me that no one gives a shit about you. And what he meant was that no one is going to do things for you. No one is going to make life or dream or ambitions or goals happen for you. No one is going to save you. You have to be that person for yourself and you have to get the things that you want to get done, done. And that stuck with me. And maybe he said it in kind of a harsh way, but I kind of like it when people are just straight to the point. I'm very much not a sugar coating person at all. I like it when people just give it to me straight. So yeah, I think that was a pretty good piece of advice. Thank you, former boss. And that was it for this Q&A. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted their questions on Instagram. I have filmed a separate video for my Patreon page answering some bonus questions. So if you want to check that out, I will leave the link for that in the description box. And that was it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.